you, ladies and gentlemen. Our next speaker will be Ms. Anne Stremont Durbin. She's an author, a human rights attorney, and director of advocacy and grant making for Jewish World Watch. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Anne Stremont Durbin. for having me. I'm honored to be here representing my organization, Jewish World Watch. Um, Jewish World Watch is a longtime partner of BAMA. We've been um, at the rallies screaming alongside you and we're honored to stand in solidarity with you. Um, I've just recently joined the organization, but I've been following the situation in Myanmar for quite some time. And I've been very actively trying to advocate on acknowledging this for what it truly is, a genocide. Um, just a few days before the one year anniversary of the military crackdown, which led to horrific and egregious violations, which have been you know, detailed by many of the speakers, I authored a piece saying that you know, Jewish World Watch believes this is a genocide and the US government should too. Um, I also cited various reasons why genocidal intent um, was present, including um, indications of very detailed planning on be behalf of um, the Myanmar security forces and military, um, the Facebook posts, which just were so full of bile and hate and anger. Um, I'm sure many of you know that Facebook is really the only connection most people in Myanmar have to the internet, and they view it as a news source. Um, and the government, um, the military, uh, Buddhist leaders, uh, civilians have all been using it systematically as a means of, you know, um, spreading falsities and hatred. And Facebook did nothing. Um, a Reuters report exposed all of this, and then uh, the UN fact-finding mission um, uh, uh, pointed out Facebook's complicity in um, the genocide, and only then have they hired a human rights specialist and gotten more people who speak Burmese so that they can monitor what's going on. But the damage has already been done. Um, there was also systematic planning. Uh, they went around taking away any kind of sharp objects, anything that um, the Rohingya could use as a uh, um, means of defending themselves. Um, they started arming um, uh, Buddhist monks and arming um, uh, villagers. Uh, they, the hate speech just increased and increased to sort of staggering proportions, and they were just waiting, they were waiting for these um, attacks um, by ARSA to justify this completely disproportionate evisceration of the Rohingya people. Um, so, on our part, we've been pushing for the United States to acknowledge this as a genocide. It still has yet to do so. Thank you. Um, so, number one, we really want the State Department and uh, Secretary of State Pompeo to step up and do the right thing and call it what it is. Um, we've been advocating with various congressmen um, both uh, uh, members of the House and Senate. Pardon me. Um, um, kind of coming, uh, bringing them up to date on any developments in regards to the situation in Myanmar, um, and also giving them all of the information to come out and say that it's a genocide. Why are people so afraid of using this word when it's so clear that this is what is transpiring? Um, you know, the UN fact-finding mission has said that genocidal intent may be present and that, you know, individuals responsible must be held to account. Um, as you mentioned, the government of Canada has finally stepped up and become 
one of the major countries to acknowledge this. And, you know, even major international human rights organizations have been hesitant about using this term, which is shocking to me. So we at Jew Jewish World Watch have really been pushing for people to acknowledge it and to take the steps that such a designation requires, both morally and under inter international um, human rights and humanitarian law. Um, so we've been meeting with representatives um, in Congress and um, pushing for the adoption of the Burma Act of 2018, which passed the House and then was stopped in the Senate. Um, people say that Mitch McConnell, who is very good friends with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, has blocked it so that it won't even come up for a vote. So we've been trying to push for senators and congressmen to create new legislation um, so that you know the US government can't just shove this under the rug, but has to remain vigilant and do the right thing when it comes to the genocide. The Treasury, <laughs> the Treasury um, uh, Department's sanctions on um, four people and two infantry, in, infantry divisions is not sufficient. It doesn't target the upper echelons of power. It doesn't target the highest in the chain of command, who are the ones who instituted this entire thing. Um, we need for the US government to step up and put sanctions not only on the individuals, um, ba uh, put travel bans on them and their family members, but also to go after their businesses. Because there are so many corporations, <laughs> there are so many corporations throughout Myanmar that are run by the junta, you know, run by the military. And they are, they are, they continue to make money because Sanctioning one person won't do anything at all. Um, they have to really follow the cash to see where it's going um, and, 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 and do this right comprehensively. It can't just be um, a diplomatic you know, lie, essentially, that they're using to cover up their inaction. Um, so we've also really been pressing hard uh, for the um, immediate um, release of journalists Wallon and uh, Kwaso O. Oh, I hope I'm not butchering that too badly. Um, but uh, Jewish World Watch has been meeting with representatives like Sherman and Royce um, to have them issue statements to apply pressure on Pompeo. Um, various letters have been authored and issued and calls have been made. Um, Representative Royce recently said uh, that these journalists must be immediately um, released because um, this genocide can no longer go on. So that's a very high-ranking member of um, the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee um, calling it a genocide, A, and also calling for their release, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is, because we need people like that to, to be our advocates, you know, in, in, the, in government on the international stage, um, and Jewish World Watch is doing all that we can to continue pushing for those issues, and um, <laughs> thank you. So I, I personally authored a letter that several representatives have signed on to, um, uh, you know, uh, pushing um, Pompeo to acknowledge this is a genocide and to release the journalists, and um, we've been really following the ICC process as well. Um, as many of our wonderful speakers have mentioned, the ICC has um, said that because part of the act of deportation um, transpired on Bangladesh soil, and because Bangladesh is a party to the Rome Statute establishing the International Criminal Court, um, that individuals responsible for the atrocities, namely, um, uh, excuse me, yeah, uh, and namely those in the, uh, the highest levels of the military um, can be held to account before the International Criminal Court. But um, the chief prosecutor also said that this may extend to other Article 7 crimes. 
So there is a possibility that even though some crimes weren't actually completed in Bangladesh, that, that the ICC is willing to extend its reach to bring in other crimes um, against humanity and potentially even genocide. Um, but it, it, it is a great thing that the ICC is really moving forward on this. Um, just a few days ago, the, the chief prosecutor um, said that she was beginning a preliminary investigation, which is the first um, step under the ICC to, you know, put a, a, a situation, a country situation on their agenda. So that's very promising. We will continue advocating for the U.S. to cooperate with the ICC and for um, Bur uh, Myanmar to cooperate with the ICC and also get as many P5 um, Security Council members on board, um, those with veto power, and to join Canada in championing this issue and calling it what it is. Um, so that's our advocacy efforts, and I believe that we share a lot of the same goals with Bama, who's been doing excellent work. I've just read, read over what you know their call, call of action um, that's coming out of this conference, and it's right on point, and we will continue to partner and move these important agendas forward. Um, you. Now, um, another part of my work is uh, grant making, and we have been um, attempting to help the um, near million uh, refugees currently in Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh as best we can. Um, we've built a number, number of um, huts for the refugees, um, specifically designed to endure monsoon season, which has ripped through Bangladesh and caused, made a disastrous situation much worse. Um, the camp setting is really abysmal. It's, it's difficult to see. Um, you know, these people come, ha have had to come from um, enduring massacres, rapes, the burning of children. I mean, every possible, you know, violation of human dignity that you could fathom. And now they're left to sort of kind of just sit around waiting in these squalid camps, um, trying to deal with their trauma and figure out where to go next. So we've been trying to um, provide them with housing so at least they have shelter um, in these difficult sort of weather conditions. Um, we've also been working with a organization that helps with emergency preparedness and first aid. And um, we're planning to have a field mission to, to the camps in Bangladesh to try to identify other local partners, um, possibly working on issues such as um, post-conflict psychosocial rehabilitation, um, providing emergency education to you know, these children, um, because the children are the ones who are victimized the most um, in, in these types of genocidal situations. And, um, you know, we don't want to risk an entire generation of the Rohingya people um, losing an opportunity to learn and um, unable to sort of realize their full potential. Um, and we're going to be advocating very strongly for the international community to step up and provide these services because it's one thing to have a camera crew in there and have these testimonies, which, you know, is important for documentation and also for giving people a voice and being able to sort of um, have the experience of testifying as a means of healing. But it's another thing to give them the vital services that they need. And I don't think that the international community has stepped up enough to um, deal with the extreme um, sort of gaps in funding and in aid that these million, this, you know, 800, 900,000 people are experiencing on a daily basis. So we're going to be working to bridge that gap as best we can. And um, I just want to offer the opportunity for any of you who may know um, local organizations that you feel are doing a very good job of addressing um, this population, um, I would really appreciate if you could come up to me and just let me know because we're always looking for organizations that are on the ground, um, that are indigenous, that are really tied into the experience of you know, victims of genocide and mass atrocities 
and um, are kind of taking innovative approaches to fill um, important needs in those affected populations. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's what, what we're doing, and um, we're going to be continuing to to work on on issues regarding um, the repatriation and the return, the safe and secure return of the Rohingya, also on issues of uh, post-conflict rehabilitation and um, post-conflict stabilization. A lot of the work that we do is around making survivors um, strong enough to resist future acts of violence perpetrated against them and rebuilding their societies so that they can thrive despite um, the horrible vicissitudes that they faced. So um, uh, thank you all for being here and thank you for allowing me to speak and share our work. Um, I really appreciate your time. And here's a certificate of appreciation for all the work that you're doing to help raise awareness for India. Thank you so much, Anne. And Jewish World Watch been helping us on these issues, and we are continue to work with 